All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to discuss some base design techniques. Specifically, I wanted to show you how I made um, the kind of main growl that's in uh, my latest EP, Aurora. I really, really, really like this sound, and I wanted to show off how I kind of made this thing, and uh, hopefully you can apply this to your own music. So let's play it first so you can hear it. So that growl is very flangery. There's a lot of chorus, a lot of movement with it. And so I wanted to show you how I made that. So I'm going to do it from scratch because unfortunately, as you guys know, I lost all of my project files. So I don't have this one anymore because this was a very old song. So uh, first, let's do the basics of adding like a little mock master channel on here. Usually this is how I master my tracks. I know it's very simple. I used to use Isotope way back in the day, but I find that OTT uh, works just as well these days. And then of course, in our limiter, we wanna turn all this stuff off. And all right, I believe I used a Respace patch for this one specifically. So I'm gonna see if I can find something that's somewhat close to it. All right, I think I used this one here. I'm not exactly sure. But I think it was that one, and what I did was actually clone it twice, and then I reversed it, so it kind of like feeds into itself. And so that way we kind of get some movement with it. Now, um, I don't know what key the actual song is, but usually I pitch it up um, half a semitone, like you can see there in the top left, 50 cents. I do this just because it kind of gives songs a little bit more of an interesting sound. So I'm just going to pitch this up, this one up 150. So we have this key now. And uh, we're going to use the typical technique that I usually use. I know exactly what sound I used for this pack. Um, this can be done with any type of granulator. Um, as I went over, uh, I have a new sample pack out, the sample pack volume three. And in there... I made a whole bunch of granulators, which are these things. Um, it's basically samples that you run through a granulator, <laughs> which constantly plays the sound over and over again at random intervals. And so I used one of those um, from Skybreak that he made, uh, which is actually very familiar. If you've listened to the song Soul Shards, um, this was the sample that he used in soul shards if i can find exactly where it is i know what it's called this one right here so this is how he made the main bass in that song so you can see sounds very familiar um, but i use this sample as well just with a different processing technique i used something a little different than what he did um, and so uh, we, we kind of got a different sound because of that and so um in this one uh, i kind of just usually when I'm making these type of bases, I like to line up a certain point that I like. So I think I lined it up in a way where um, it kind of meets this end point right here, I believe. And so uh, it was kind of stretched <laughs> interestingly. I think something like this. Okay, there we go. So now we have them in the mixer. And so uh, now they're color coordinated so you can understand this. So the first thing we're going to do is side chain the bass to this um, dream bell type thing. So we want to side chain that there. And then we're going to route it to a dry channel. So this dry channel just controls the volume of this sound um, without affecting this number six right here. So um, I'm just going to start with something like this. We're going to change that later on, and I'll turn this one down a little bit so it doesn't hurt our ears. And uh, we're going to go ahead and add a Vocodex to this because this is how we're going to get that um, watery crystal bass sound. And so you want to make sure in the top left here that this is set to um, 1 because that means it is side chaining itself to this bass right here. So we just want to increase the wet, and um, without any effects on it whatsoever, you're going to see that now these... Uh, two tracks have been routed to each other. And so now what we need to do is we need to kind of create this in a way to where this synth type sound, whatever it is, this crystal thing becomes way more present than the actual bass. 
All right, so I have a very specific uh, channel state that I've saved for this. So you can see the channel has changed and um, I will just leave this on the screen. You can pause right here and you can copy all of these settings. These are the settings that I use as a baseline. So I usually change them later on. And um, basically I'll explain what this did. So what this did was we took this synth base and we crushed a lot of the low end out of it and increased the mids, which now made it way more uh, watery sounding. If you want it to be kind of like gritty and have more bass, just turn the wet down. If you want it to be really synth like and really watery, really color base like, then just turn the wet up and, uh, without any post-processing effects. So I turned off all the OTT and the limiter and everything. We get this kind of sound. And so you can see it is, um, very, very, very wet. Now we need to take, uh, this, I forgot to route this here. So uh, once we play it again, the two bases are now linked to this. So pretty cool. Well, there was some other stuff I did with this bass that really kind of gives it that um, insane chorusy sound it has. Okay, I definitely use this one. I know that for sure. I think I use this. Um, this intro piece here. And so we have to go up 250 for this one, but I don't think I vocoded this one. I think I just layered this one on top of the bass noise. And so uh, it, it was pretty quiet and I cut out a lot of the bass and I think I maybe added some chorus to this one. So this is what it sounds like dry. But then what I did was add some chorus and flanger to it which really gives it that like uh, <laughs> detuned wide feel, I guess is the word I'm going to go for. Um, and so I was kind of just honestly messing around with a bunch of different settings to see uh, what kind of sounds I could come up with. But I think I don't use full flanger on this one. I think it was only a little bit. So we kind of got something like this. So if we play everything all at once. Thing and I think I probably normalize this as well. Just kind of bring the volumes a little closer together, and not have it be as loud. Ah, now that I'm thinking about it, to be honest with you, I don't know if I vocoded this because it sounds weird with it vocoded. I think it was. It's definitely in there, but I think I just added this as another layer. So I'm gonna load my atmosphere thing, which is literally just an EQ with a low cut on it, and just make it quiet. <laughs> All right, so that, that's starting to get pretty close. I can hear the resemblance now. Um, I want to OTT this as well because we are going to kind of crunch it a little bit, give it some pretty strong compression, and we want that bass to be more present. We really want that Reese in there because uh, that's what I love about that sound is that it has that Reese in it. If we take a listen. So you can hear in there, actually, um, this is how I did it. So uh, what note are we? We are in. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm just going to switch the key of this really quick, because um, for those of you who make electronic music, you really don't ever want your sub bass to be on uh, C because C is in the middle of the octave switch on a piano. And so when your sub is in C3, that usually means it's really, really weak. So I'm going to take this sample and I'm just going to move it up. Let's just move it up like 250 cents. So we're on D instead. So uh, that'll move us down here. So we're going to go uh, from 150 to 250 to 350. All right, so now that we are in a more appropriate key, uh, we have a lot stronger of a bass now, so we need to actually make that this note into a sub bass. So let's do that really quick. Super easy. We're just going to go to global, make sure that it is set to mono and not stereo by turning the width down to zero, and then I'm going to load my sub bass patch. I'll show you what each um, individual thing does. So we have an OTT on here that has these settings. Basically, I'm just completely muting the high end and mid end and boosting the lows. Uh, you could think of this similar to like adding distortion to a sub bass. I know that's uh, something that a lot of people do as well. Uh, and so we actually are doing a little bit of that here with Fruity Wave Shaper, just increasing this a little bit, 
the slightest amount just to add a little bit more thump to the sub. And then I cut my subs at 178 hertz. And you can see uh, there's no low cut here, actually. This is kind of a modern technique a lot of people are using these days. And so uh, if you want a really wide sub bass, this is a great way to do it by leaving that low end passing through there. Very, very, very deep. So that's just going to play underneath our note. So now we have this. So we're starting to get pretty close, but you'll notice in the song, there's just this little flanger chorus effect that it has that really gives it that unique sound. So how did I do that? Well, let me show you because I think this is really, really cool. I love the way it sounds in the headphones. All right, so here's how I did this. So first we're gonna start with the water channel because this is the most present sound there is. And so we're gonna add a chorus and we're gonna add a phaser and then we're gonna add an LFO tool. So I use Peck, Peck and Egg, however you say that, Tremelo. And uh, we're gonna set it to this mode. So we don't want the note mode. We don't want this mode. We want the manual mode. And we're just going to make a shape that kind of looks like this went the wrong way there you want this sine wave looking shape and uh we're gonna um essentially if you go if you find that you can't like i can't right click on this right so how are we going to create an automation clip well you just click on it with your left click go to tools and go to last tweak parameters and now we can edit that and we can change the frequency so um i believe this one maybe starts slow and then it goes really fast and then it goes slow and then it goes really fast and then really slow again. So it was kind of crazy. I kind of uh, made it random on purpose to give it a really weird feel. And so then I'm just going to, um, I'm going to set the depth here to a hundred percent, but we're going to change the mix in the actual um, mixer. So we're, I'm going to the mix volume and now uh, I'm just going to kind of, uh, when it's really fast, that's where I kind of want it to be super aggressive. And uh, it's kind of going to be random. We don't want it to be like on all the time or else it's going to sound weird. So this should give it a little bit of movement. So well, we're starting to get a little closer. We're going to have to do the same thing for um, uh, this sound right here because or else it's going to sound weird. So now all we need to do is take... Uh, this chorus and we need to mix this in there as well so I don't remember exactly how I did this but I think I could get pretty close here and uh, I definitely did something like this here which is automating the mix as well and just kind of having it um, you know sweep in at different points like we did so why don't we just follow the same pattern that we have for the frequency like this and uh, we're gonna get a pretty cool sound now so pretty sweet it sounds definitely crazy so i'm just going to remake um the same lfo tool so literally what we just did i'm just going to do the same thing over again like three more times and then you're going to hear that it starts to get that fluctuation sound that we were trying to achieve all right so uh, a million automation clips later you can start to hear this sound come together now so this is what we have <laughs> So a lot of movement in there. It's starting to sound pretty cool. So uh, the one thing that this has, which you might not be able to hear in the song, but I'll point it out. So let's play it again. Is it's got some reverb on it. So right at the end. So we're just going to make um, it for, we don't want this for bass, right? So we don't need this on the sub. We don't need this on the re-space. We just need this on the melodic parts. And so I'm going to add a fruity reverb with the ambience preset. And we're going to uh, just increase it a little bit here and get rid of the uh, the bass that's in the reverb. So add a little bit of low cut. And we're going to automate this percentage right here. So I'm just going to do this for all of these. If I'm not mistaken, we should have uh, basically how I made this sound. So you can see we're starting to get up there in the layers, to 20 layers for one bass. So now this is what we got. And so we have this really cool kind of sweeping effect. Of course, you can kind of change this to however you want. You can do different frequencies. Like if we, um, if I keep this depth 
stronger, you're going to hear that this actually ends up having a different sound when you hear it because um, you're going to hear the fluctuation in the frequencies more. So it's kind of a cool way to make some stuff. You know, now that I think about it, this probably wasn't as strong at the tail end. I think it kind of slopes off a little bit. It's kind of more like this, to be honest with you. With everything on top of each other, we should have something pretty close to the original sound I had. And so if we go into this here and play it, they should be pretty close. Obviously, they're going to be a different key, but I'll render it as a sample and pitch it up so you can hear the similarity. Now, very, very important. I'm going to introduce this as well. This video is going on for a long time here, but uh, I think this is important to share as well is I added a low cut automation in that and uh, with the song. So I loaded a parametric EQ too. And I think I loaded a stereo enhancer as well. And what I did was automate um, the bass frequency. So um, you have to make sure throughout your song when you're doing this, that if this EQ is not being used, that you mute it because parametric EQ two changes the sound of the song. So you don't want that playing throughout your whole song. You only want to use it at the points that you are having it being automated. So that's why I made this mix level here. You can see it turns it off when we don't need it. And I believe we do something like this here. So it's kind of like a sweep right at the end, uh, maybe a little bit more like this. And then uh, our stereo separation, we're actually going to make this mono right at the end. So just in this last tail part, we want to go from 50 to like 75, have it sweep up and then sweep back down again. So you're gonna hear it if you're wearing headphones, which I highly recommend for this video, uh, you're gonna hear it kind of narrow in on itself right at the end and then return back to where it was. Probably a little stronger to be honest with you, probably like this. Okay, so now we should have sound like this. So you can see it kind of narrows in on itself, it closes in and then it returns back to that. Uh, main state so and then if we go to the key of the song which is uh minus 400 cents from our sample that we just made over here it's going to sound a little flat because we pitched it down 400 cents and the sub bass is going to sound weird but you can essentially get the idea we now have uh something somewhat similar to the bass in the song i'll play the two back to back <laughs> So that's a quick tutorial on how to make the bass from Aurora. I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned a few tricks from that. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that this can be used for anything. So you don't have to use a sample for this. You can make your own bass patch. Um, you can make your own granulators. Uh, but this method will allow you to get that really chorusy movement feel to your bass. And you can create some cool stuff with it. And uh, yeah, it can be... Um, cool for any key so you know let's just for fun we'll pitch it up for 200 cents and hear what it sounds like we can mute this ott probably will sound pretty interesting we can return it to a regular key uh in the standard tuning So it can be used for uh, pretty much any application when it comes to having a main growl in your song. This is also a great way to create some original sounds and kind of get that unique sound if some producers are struggling with that. I guess that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that was probably maybe a little bit of a longer one. I'm not sure how I'm going to cut this up. Thank you to all the new subscribers. We're very close to 2,000 subscribers on the channel, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. I cannot express enough how grateful I am for each and every one of you. And uh, we're also very close to 1,000 on SoundCloud as well. We are only a couple hundred away. Um, and I absolutely never thought that that would happen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just thank you guys so much for that. Um, I will make sure to post... Uh, the Soundstorm Sample Pack 3 on uh, the Gumroad page. And uh, I will put my link tree in the description so you can find all this stuff down there. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.